Hello everyone, I'm Mandy Foote, illustrator of Bev and Kev, written by Katrina Germain and published by Little Book Press right here in Adelaide. And shortlisted for the Children's Book of the Year Awards Early Childhood and we are so excited about that and really want to thank everyone for your support, we really do appreciate it. I am here today, thanks to the CBCA, to show you how to draw Bev. But before we do, I would love to share with you some of the insights into the creation of these characters. So when I start drawing, uh, everything is created in my sketchbook. And this is my sketchbook, one of them, I have many. We can see the drawings here of Bev. These are some of the earlier drawings. This one at the top here was drawn by my son Joshy, and you'll find this one in the end papers on the hardback version. And I love taking my sketchbook into schools uh, on author visits to show the students so they can see how these characters come to life. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is why are some of my drawings purple? And that's because of the pencil that I have used. So these pencils, they look like normal pencils but they are, they're called copying pencils and they were gifted to me by my grandfather and these are over 50 years old. They're called Memphisto copying pencils. I had no idea they turned purple when I first started using them. When you first use them, they start out grey and then after 24 hours, they turn purple. And once they turn purple, you cannot rub the drawings out. So he used to use these in the council chambers where he worked um, many years ago and I just love drawing with them. But sometimes I will get creator's block and in order to overcome that I'll do a simple thing like change pencil and that's why some of these drawings are blue. And here's some of the penguins also that feature in the story. So everything goes into my sketchbook and once everything is drawn they go through a process to get approved by the publisher and then I get them ready to paint. So I love painting traditionally still. Everything for Bev and Kev was done in watercolour, the characters. Here we can see one of the paintings. There's Bev. And I love taking these into the schools as well so students can see how the paintings were created, uh, see them up close uh, and hopefully I will get to see you in a school one day soon. But now let's get drawing. Grab a pencil and a piece of paper and let's draw. Okay, when I start drawing new characters and I explain this to all the kids when I go into schools, every drawing starts with a foundation shape. You need to find your basic shapes in order to create your characters because as a children's book illustrator, you need to be able to redraw this character over and over again. And if you've established your basic shapes, then it makes it a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with drawing the basic shapes of Bev and Bev starts with an oval. So if we draw this oval, draw the foundation a bit lighter because then we're going to add the details over the top and you'll be able to darken up the lines, okay? Now don't make your oval too big or your giraffe's going to have a very short neck. So we add the oval shape in kind of like a football as well and then we're going to add that makes up the basis for her head and then we're going to add in a circle for the nose it's a, it's a smallish circle and it's not too far away from the head it's about the same distance from the main oval that we've drawn now we're going to put a line this is going to help us show where the eye is going to go I'm going to put a line straight through these two and we're also going to come down from the top. Okay, this will give us a cross line. This is where our eye is going to be positioned. Out from where this line extends at the top of the head there, we're going to add in some basic shapes of Oh, it could be a house, it could be a diamond, a rectangle on the side, that type of thing. <laughs> That's our basic position for the ears. 
okay now you'll notice this is one side of the neck the other side of the neck is going to come down on the other side of our oval so I'll give you a second to add those basic shapes in then we're going to add in some more details and you'll see how it starts to take shape this line coming through also guides us for our nostril for Bev now the giraffes have what they call horns so from the top of the head you're going to add in two little shapes on the angle and then there's a bump on Bev's head and all giraffes most giraffes have this so this is where our bump comes in here I'm going to darken up these lines now and we're going to join it onto a small circle now let me ex just say one thing okay everybody's giraffes are going to look different that is why the end papers are in the book because everybody's drawings are unique and that is the best part of it okay let's add in another part for those horns and you can add the fluffy bits on top if you like just put those in there just like scribbles there we go looks looking like a giraffe it's already starting to look like a giraffe okay <laughs> from that horn we're going to come down and around and we're going to start to form Bev's first ear so just darken those lines and around we come now the part that's in the middle of Bev's ear that line there has three little I don't know what you call them nodules but there's three these are just little characteristics that I developed for Bev so that I would get consistency throughout the drawings we can define that back ear there now put a little bit of shading in there because it's behind her front ear and her front ear has these little crease marks so we can add those in there as well okay a little bit of shading on this back horn too just to show where that is all right now let's add the eye in it's not as hard as you think it is we've already determined where it's going to go it's where that cross is so the eye is just a curve up I guess you call it a, little, a letter U and then another one down and there's this little nodule at the end of Bev's eye and I leave a little white spot in there because it makes it looks like kind of like her eye is watering um, it gives her a bit more definition in her eye we're just going to block that in again there's going to be a little bit of a white left at the bottom of Bev's eye there and we leave a white spot for that shine on the pupil okay those white spots in the eyes make all the difference now Bev has you could say she's got eyeliner on let's call it eyeliner underneath her eye we're going to put a line underneath her eye that's a bit thick that line and there's eight little nodules okay little dots and these should be consistent throughout the book now one two three four five six seven eight there we go and we need to have just some defining lines at the top of Bev's eye now one of the most important things that makes Bev who she is is her eyelashes so we want very long eyelashes add in as many as you want but they are very long and now because the part on the other side of her face we're not seeing that second eye we can still add in the eyelashes to show where that eye is going to be We'll add in a little bit of shading just on the top of the, her head there to find that bump a little bit more and there's a couple of little spots here okay let's bring down to the nose where we've got our cross through our small circle we're going to add in the nostril just like that and she has a couple of little lines that go around that to help define that nostril now a giraffe's nose isn't really as 
curvy as Bev's, but um, I use it to add expression. So we're going to make Bev's nose just stand out a little bit. That joins up underneath the nostril. We're going to curve and a loop. Just like that. A little bit of shading to show some definition of Bev's nose there. And her chin underneath her chin comes directly underneath there. I've just made my circle a little bit bigger there. And then of course this joins in underneath. That's what our oval shape is for. So to define that jawbone, Bev has a nice little curve here and it just comes up underneath. And she has lots of lots of whiskers for Bev. And she has a few lines that run down her face just to help define that face there. Okay. And there's now I have I have a confession to make. Every spot on Bev is not consistent throughout the book. I apologize for that. It is too much hard work to try and follow every spot. But there are three underneath her eye. And then a couple more in those positions underneath her chin. A couple of small random ones. Just like that. And I do add a few extra little lines. You'll see in the process of, of drawing Bev that in the paintings, I've kept these lines in here. I really like these extra loose lines. So our face is almost determined. What we have to add in now is, of course, her long neck. So we follow that line down. Add the second one in. Give it a little bit of a curve. There's a few extra lines underneath Bev's chin there. And we add in her random spots. And every giraffe's pattern, and th this is a fact that every, every single giraffe's pattern is unique. So everybody's drawing is going to look different. And that's a great thing because that's reality. And I added an extra few lines around these spots to help. Just give some extra life to Bev. Now the very last thing to do is add in her glorious mane. And there's no formula for this reason, for, for this, this mane either. There's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just adding in some scribbles. That's what makes up Bev's mane. So all the way down, you can block in those little spots, just loosely shade them in. I'll add a few more little bit of shading underneath there and down the face. And there we have her. That is Bev. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it.